Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tasta Cakes. It's Jen and I'm gonna show you today how I made this adorable waffles and mochi cake. And if you need any of the tools or supplies you see me use, if you check the link in the description below, it should be able to help you out. Now to begin my waffles and mochi cake, I am starting with some chocolate cake and that's right, I made an actual cake. I'm not using a dummy this time. And you're probably all like, what? But yep, yeah, it does happen. I don't always just do it for the gram or for the tube. So anyway, all right, I started with a chocolate cake. It was this crazy new recipe I tried. It's a really, really dark, almost bitter chocolate. It was really intense. I would probably honestly never make it again, but if anybody wants the recipe, let me know and I will post it in the comments. But anyway, so I made this cake. Okay, I'm using six inch rounds here. And I am using some caramel buttercream icing. So like I said, the recipe had all kinds of potential. Very weird though. Anyway, so I have my top piece there that's rounded off. I put my layers up as you see, and I'm wrapping it up in plastic wrap and sticking it in the fridge. I need this cake to be cold. So I actually put it in the freezer. It wasn't just the fridge. I put it in the freezer for like yeah, maybe half an hour. I took it out and now I'm putting my crumb coat on. This is just regular straight up buttercream this time. And I just slather it on. I, you saw how crazy and wonky those tears were. It's that recipe. I don't know. It just clung to the sides and it was crumbly, but not. It was just weird. I don't know. I'm usually pretty good at following directions and recipes, but I went off the rails somewhere with this one. Anyway, though, once I got it into a nice dome shape like so back in the fridge it goes okay now while that's in the fridge I'm using gum paste here not fondant this is gum paste and I rolled it out pretty thick this is just golden yellow and cut out two large circles um I believe these were about three inch circles now that little cube that I'm using is just something that I made once upon a time I had some extra white gum paste in my hand and I wanted to see if I could make a square out of it to try to make a dice or a die I guess the singular is and I never did, but I held on to it because I thought, well, I don't know, I just liked it. So I'm using that to press a print, you know, the square prints into my circles to make them look like waffles. Because, of course, waffles has waffles on her head or his head. Waffles is head. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just making a nice stamp going all the way to the edges and make sure they're uh, trying to make sure they're nice and even anything square that you have that you can make a nice little print out of go for it I just happened to have that so I used it I had to retrim my circle as you saw because by pressing down it gets all wonky and out of shape and so this brings it back into line it makes it nice and neat again did the same thing with the second one pressed it all out center it I started from the center on each one so that way it's nice and symmetrical trim off the extra there you go and I stuck them on a paper towel and let them dry for a little while there's my cube isn't it cute okay now I took my cake out of the fridge you see how stiff and hard it is and I am just trimming off underneath at an angle around the cake because uh, waffles I'm going to have her head or I just keep saying her I'm sorry if, if waffles is not a her but I'm trimming off around her head and I'm just trimming underneath. I'm not going so far that I'm undermining it and it's going to tip over. I am definitely going to challenge, you know, its structural stability by doing this. So you might have seen it just move right there a little bit. But I'm going to brace it up by putting a scarf in its place. So it's okay. I trim really deep on one side because that's where her chin is going to be. And the rest of the way around the cake, I'm only kind of trimming out a little bit. I don't, I'm not going too crazy. See here, that's the front. That will be the front, I should say. It's a lot deeper. And I just trimmed a little bit tucked under. I missed a spot. There we go. I fixed it. No problem. And a little bit more underneath all around. Again, it's not perfect, but it's okay because she's very furry. And the scarf is going to be in there, so I'm not too worried. So you saw me clean up my cake plate. Taking some extra icing spackling in everything that I carved away and once I get it all spackled up and everything again I'm going to stick it if you can guess back in the fridge that's right before I put it back though I did make sure to clean it up because once that buttercream sets it's it's a pain in the butt to get off of your cake plate all right now this is going to be waffles scarf so it's a purple scarf I just rolled out a big long piece of purple fondant this is not gum paste it is fondant and I'm using my little, I don't know, cross hatch tool, whatever. 
stitching tool, marking tool, to make a whole bunch of little stitch patterns zigzaggy up, down, back and forth, all over the scarf. And once I have it nice and roughed up enough, I'm going to flip it. And then I'm going to start folding the edges over. I made it a little wider on purpose so that I'd have extra to roll over. I find when I make scarves for cakes, if you fold over the top and bottom edge like that, it when you wrap it around the cake, it gives it a nice rounded off edge at the top and bottom, and then it kind of naturally will tuck in in the center. And I just think it looks nicer. So that's what I do. So as you can see, tucking it in, wrapping it around. She kind of wears it to the back, I think, of her neck. So I had it wrapped around toward the back. Now this piece of blue fondant, light blue fondant, is going to be on her face. I kind of cut it like a football. I had it up on the cake. I just kept trimming away until I felt like I had a good size. Because she's got a pretty big face. It um, takes up a lot of the front of the cake, the first half of the cake, I got to say. So yeah, so I stuck it on. And this, is, again, is the part where I had cut out the most from underneath the cake, where I said her chin was going to be. So once I have it in place, I'm going to use my veining tool. And not quite halfway through it, but almost, I'm going to make a nice deep gouge in it. I'm not cutting all the way through the fondant, though. And that's going to be her giant puppet mouth. So I'm going to press the gum paste in all around it, tuck in my edges. Now I'm going to do her eyes. I have a ball of gum paste that I cut in half. And by doing this, I get two very equal size portions and I'm going to make her eyes out of this. So there's no guesswork involved when you're trying to make eyes and you always make one bigger than the other. Just make one bigger ball and cut it in half. And then you're usually pretty darn good. You can see here, I moved the eyes and I left black marks on her face. It's no problem to remove this kind of thing. It's not a big deal. You just get a clean paintbrush with water and just like I did, just mop it off. Use a paper towel to dry it and you're good to go. Now, I'm adding her eyelashes. This is just some more black gum paste. Uh, I just rolled it thin between my fingers, as you saw. Stuck two little pieces on either side to make her eyelashes. And then I'm adding a little bit of, of white highlight to each eye. Now, I thought I was recording again, so I apologize. It turns out I wasn't, but I'm using just a big star tip and buttercream icing. And I just piped all around the head and up on top of the edge of the gum paste of the blue of her face. I went along the top of the um, scarf that I put on her and whatever I did I then went over the top of in spots to make extra longer fur because she's kind of very fluffy in certain areas. It's longer than others. So I was trying to represent that. I'm going back now because I realized I forgot her eyebrows. I cut two rectangles, long thin rectangles, out of my gum paste again. And I'm just putting them over top of her eyes, slightly tilted upward and inward. So she's got a very friendly, calm, you know, approachable look to her. And now I'm going to show you how to make mochi. So to make my mochi, I am going to show you how I'm going to mix the color for mochi. I'm mixing gum paste here. You could use fondant with this if you added Tylos powder or CMC powder, it's called, to make it stiffer. But yeah, you could, in this situation, you could. But I am starting with pink food coloring, just straight up pink food coloring. And as you saw, I only put a little bit on there. I mixed it through. You saw how I need it. I used one hand, then the other, back and forth. And now I'm adding a little bit, maybe twice the volume or one and a half times the volume of creamy peach food coloring to make this color. So when you mix them together, it's not quite peach. It's definitely not quite pink. It's just kind of a nice in-between color, and that's what I'm going for. And this is also, I think, you know, the color of Patrick from SpongeBob SquarePants, too. Now, when I'm making my ball here, I don't want any seams to show. And I'm making it nice and round, and I'm trying to pull and fold and work it so that all my lines, my creases, my seams, you see them all there? I'm now pinching and pulling all of them to one spot, and then I cut it off. And that way, when you make a ball like this... You won't have any cracks or any lines or any seams that are going to show. So it's like a little trick of the trade I'm sharing with you here. Now I am making my mochi nice and round, but it's not perfectly round like a ball. It is a little flatter. I keep saying it. I have no idea if mochi is supposed to be a boy or a girl or what, but mochi is a mochi. And I personally love mochi. I think it's very tasty. If you haven't tried it, highly recommend it. All right, now that I've got my mochi, I'm going to go halfway through. You see I put a little dot in the middle there? 
halfway up, halfway down, whatever. That's where the mouth is going to be. So now I'm going to take two black beads and I'm going to use them for eyes. I just shoved one in and it popped right out. So I had to put some water in to make the candy actually stick into it. So this time, because I learned, I'm going to put a little hollow using the back of my paintbrush, add a little water, pop another little candy bead in, and now Mochi has two little black eyes. If you don't have these little candy pearls, no worries. Just use two little black pieces of gum paste or fondant. Either way will work. Now for the mouth, I'm going to take a small, small circle. Going to cut out, uh, not even in half, maybe a little bit less than half of my circle. And then just gently round the two sharp edges there on the corner. And then place my little teeny tiny mouth right between Mochi's little teeny tiny eyes. And now Mochi is happy. And <laughs> I just think Mochi's so cute. I just couldn't stand it. I seem to really like all these, um, these characters like that that are nice and clean and smooth and symmetrical. I just really like them. Like... I made uh, the marshmallows that were alive and cloudy with a chance of, of meatballs too. The little food animals and everything. And I made a bunch of them, but the marshmallows were so cute. I just I just prefer those simple, clean little, little figures. Anyway, back to my mochi. I made two little rectangles, as you see, out of that same little piece of gum paste that I'm working with. Make sure they're even. I added a little bit too much water to that one and it smeared when I moved the eyebrow. So you just take a clean paintbrush with clean water on it, brush it over top and then just use a paper towel, your finger, wipe it away. That'll get rid of any stains that you might make. Now to make Mochi look more Mochi-ish because he's it, Mochi, I don't know, is very felt looking, like kind of fuzzy and soft and powdery looking, like a Mochi. And so I'm taking powdered sugar and I am just dusting it with my finger. I tried using the paintbrush you see there, but it more swept everything off. So I'm using my fingers to just kind of pat and smooth powdered sugar all over Mochi's little Mochi body. And I'm just pushing it and dusting it around. And I'm kind of going a little bit heavy around that one eyebrow that I had to correct with some extra water because of course it sucked up the powdered sugar. But by doing this and then going over the little facial features with a damp paintbrush, it takes off any powder sugar that might have stuck. And now you got mochi. Now back to the cake. Okay, I stick two pieces of lollipop sticks into each side of her head. I take my waffles, which I've set, place them on either side, stick mochi in the center, and it's adorable. And then just for the heck of it, I had some extra icing. I piped a little more around the base of the scarf. And there you go. You got a very sweet, cute, fun waffles and mochi cake. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because actually it really does help me out. I've got a ton of other videos out there. So please take a look. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.